Hi there, Karen Flaherty from Living by Human Design. Hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to be talking about the gate 30, which is the gate of intensity or desire. Very appropriate as we head into Valentine's Day. Okay, so we've got the sun in gate 30, which comes off the bottom of the solar plexus. So it is an emotional gate. Um, and then we have the gate 29, which comes off the top of the sacral, which is the gate of commitment. So the sun in gate 30 started on February 13th, and it goes until uh, early on February 19th. So we're basically starting this week with no definition. It just finished up the head and ajna definition. And on Thursday, then we move into um, where Venus and Mars move into gate 41, both within a few hours of each other. And so we get this 4130 connection, which makes all of us uh, a little more emotional uh, because the root and the emotional solar plexus will be defined again. And so that forms the um, channel 3041, which is called the channel of recognition. It's all about uh, the intensity and desire of the 30 plus the creativity of the 41. And, and as I said, the root and the solar plexus get defined with that one. And that will be until uh, we change gates next week. And right now, all the planets are relatively... Uh, direct until June. Um, we do have one Mercury retrograde in there and um, just finishing up the nodes being retrograde kind of in and out, um, but basically direct. And so that's kind of a the kind of energy that um, at least from the people I listen to um, are saying that it could be um, a time when you could gain momentum on some of the projects that you've been wanting to do or had planned to do. Um, it's a, It's the kind of time when you are able to really make some progress on some of the things you had in mind. You don't have to move quickly. You just have to start moving. Um, and the energy will help you with the momentum there. The energy, I should say the energy of the planets and the transits will help you there. Um, and that will run through June and into July. So with the Sun and Gate 30, it's it's all about de desire and intensity. Um, they, the, um, in the I Ching, it's actually called feelings or the clinging fire. And it's freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as a fate. So the freedom gets recognized as an illusion that we all have somewhat limitations. Um, and that, but that the freedom is out there and we can you know, reach for it in some way, um, but that there are some limitations and we should accept them as a fate. Um, the incarnation crosses this week are the crosses of contagion, fates, and industry. And in quantum human design, we call it the gate of passion. And the gate 29 is the gate of commitment, usually. It's also called the abysmal or perseverance in the original I Ching. It's the deep within the deep. Persistence, despite difficulties, has its inevitable rewards. So it's really about persevering in the face of all kinds of difficulties, obstacles, you know, whatever kind of comes your way whenever you start a new project or you're in a project or, you know, there's things you're trying to get done. And it's that perseverance at the commitment to the project that allows you to be, to have that perseverance. In the Gene Keys, half-heartedness is the shadow, commitment is the gift, and devotion is the CD. And in human design, quantum human design, it's also called devotion. So with the Gene Key 30, um, we've got the shadow is desire because we're always desiring something. And sometimes those desires can be can lead us in the wrong direction, right? Sometimes the desires are emotional without necessarily being what our decision-making authority would tell us to choose. Um, I'll put it that way. <laughs> so sometimes we make mistakes and sometimes the desire will lead us to make those mistakes. So uh, it's just um, a word of caution there, the repressive nature of desire or of the shadow is being over serious. So, you know, having desires, but being over serious about them. And then the reactive side is being more flippant. So that repressive side, um, don't forget, is always having to do with anger more, uh, or sorry, more fearfulness. And the reactive side is being more, um, having an underlying anger there. So the repressive side here, it cause us to be over serious because we're fearful about moving forward on those desires, on those, you know, um, desires that we think we have. And then the reactive side is being flippant because you just move from one thing to another and you're not really, 
you know, it's the opposite of serious, right? It's being flippant, it's being um, not so serious and, um, or unserious and moving from one thing to another with somewhat of a flippancy, um, something that it looks like, you know, moving from one job to another, moving from one relationship to another, moving from one um, home to another, or friends, uh, you know, going through friends very quickly. Um, it's that kind of flippancy. Um, the gift is lightness, and then the CD is rapture. So in the graphic, Richard Rudd says, every desire you have can really be reduced to a single overarching desire, the desire to know your true nature. And, you know, kind of isn't that what many of us are here asking? It's like, what's our true nature? What are we really here for? And um, what should we be desiring? What, you know, what makes sense for us to want? Um, he also says, as every human being learns, the cycle of desire is eternal. You, 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 all you have to do is get one thing and then you realize that, okay, that was nice. I desired that. And now I'm on to the next thing, right? Or onto the another thing or, you know, something along the same lines, but better, bigger, more expensive, right? We all have these desires within us and um, we get to choose what the desires are. Sometimes it's, it's um, as I said, it can be emotional. And so it's not necessarily logical, right? Um, sometimes we want the person that doesn't really make a lot of sense, or we think we want the person who doesn't make a lot of sense, or we think we want the new car that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So we can have these desires, but we still get to, um, or I would suggest that we also look at what the um, other factors are and what your decision-making authority is and take all that into account before you go out and buy the new car. Um, the, um, he also says, it is not that you become helpless in a victim sense, but that you realize you are beyond needing help. So as we move up from desire to a more lightness of being and then into rapture, basically you're moving up the scale and you're becoming less and less helpless, right? You realize that you, you don't need help. You can be want, you, you can be desirous of something without being a victim. You can want something and know that you can achieve it, know that you can get it and make a logical or make a strategic choice, a strategy choice, right? That's based on your authority to make decisions that will be good for you, that we're not being led by something else, by comparisons to other people or by um, um, pure, sexual desire or any other kind of desire um, that would have us feeling like it was just for desire's sake and not because we really wanted it, right? It, so it can be, it's intense. Um, and to, this desire can be intense. It can be passionate. It can be um, lead us to all these other emotions that we may or may not be familiar with, but the desire is always there. The desire is always moving us along in a way. And so it keeps us always wanting things, always desiring more, always looking for something um, next around the corner. And that has a way of um, really propelling us and motivating us and um, not, but not always bringing us to the point that we really want to be at. And so we get to take a look at it. It's, it's, is it desire or is it more light? Is it, the lightness that we're trying to get to in the gift, as opposed to the desire that's either over serious or flippant. So we get to ask those questions whenever we're wanting something new and different. Um, and especially when we're wanting something new and different, right? Um, when we get bored with, which is funny because that's on the 36, which is the other side of the emotional solar plexus, um, just right up from the 30. Um, but when we get bored, we tend to want to have a new desire or have something that's different, new and different. And so they kind of play together that way. Um, on the other hand, it also pairs with the 29, the commitment 29, which has us be basically saying yes to commitment. So the desire can lead to commitment. So as we approach um, 
Valentine's Day and and uh, the celebrations of St. Valentine's Day, the Sun and Gate 30 is no accident, right? It's all about passion. It's about desire. It's about um, intensity. And so uh, a number of people have birthdays uh, this week, including Yoko Ono and Michael Jordan, Paris Hilton, Toni Morrison. Um, I think they all were, you know, to a to an extent, really intense about their professions. And as a result, we're very successful. So that's uh, pretty easy to see. And um, I'll just say that with um, occurring this week, desire can also lead to intensity. Um, it can be a passionate intensity or a good intensity, um, but it can also be um, an intensity that doesn't feel so great. So I'll just you know, a little word of caution. Sometimes the intensity can lead to conflict and confrontation um, that may or may not have been there at the start of your Valentine's Day celebration. So just um, beware, um, be careful. Usually there's nothing that really needs to be resolved. It just needs to be, um, once you're aware of it, it's a lot easier to get through any kind of conflict. Um, so as long as you're aware that there could be some intensity, um, there might be a problem with the at the restaurant, if you're at a restaurant, there might be a problem with the flowers or the chocolates or the whatever. Um, no need to um, get into a big, you know, um, confrontation about it. Much better to be aware that confrontation can occur, but it doesn't have to be with you. So I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Be well.